Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of ZB's Horsepower Talk. As always, I'm ZB, Zach Brown. We got another good one for you today. We're going to recap all the action. Lots of fun, crazy action at Houston Speedway with the World of Outlaws with the biggest purse on the line for four nights. And NASCAR at Nashville and NHRA action. And we'll uh, bring in my dad, Jeff Brown, for the second half of the show for Crew Chief Corner to preview all the upcoming action this week. Let's get to it. Well, first things first, I want to get into the World of Outlaw action at Houston Speedway. What and a, a phenomenal four days of racing. I, I applaud the, the track crew. Everybody getting that whole place put together, that entire event organized. Um, I wasn't there personally. Um, so if anybody saw it in person, comment down below and let me know how everything was uh, run during the day. If it was smooth and, uh, and all that. All I do know is that the racing was great. And it's probably the best I've ever had uh, picking people. Um, Especially four races in a row. Let's not worry about how my asphalt uh, picks uh, and it turned out. We don't need to worry about that at all. But my dirt picks were pretty much spot on at uh, Houston Speedway. Uh, going over night one, Kyle Larson in action. I picked him, so did Dad. And, uh, well, we were right. Uh, Larson benefited from quite a few cautions and getting those uh, late race restarts and being able to uh, be up on uh, the leaders and getting a uh, late pass over Rico, and David Gravel was rolling. I think he started 11th or 12th, and he was charging and very, very close to passing Larson, but he ran out of time. Larson holds him off and gets the first night win at Houston Speedway, and he was only going to run two of the preliminary nights, so he needed all the points he can get for the first two. Uh, night two, uh, James McFadden wins a thriller over David Gravel. David Gravel is probably dang tired of getting second with those things, but stay tuned here. i um, about to go for what happened on night four. Night three, Logan Shuhart wins over who I picked, Buddy Kofoid. And uh, Buddy Kofoid and uh, McFadden are both around the Toyotas, and Toyotas really showed up well at Houston Speedway. And uh, TRD is starting to... Uh, get things figured out um, in the dirt racing world, uh, just like they did with NASCAR. It uh, just takes time, and uh, they're, uh, they're getting there. Um, they're going to be a force to reckon with before too long, in my opinion. And the big night, the $250,000 to win night. I picked Rico Abreu to win. And I was one spot off. If uh, Buddy Kofoy didn't blow up, he had that race won. Um, that, uh, like I was saying, I was plotting Toyota uh, for those, um, for the impressive runs they've been putting on. But I think there's a reason uh, Buddy's car was running like, a hellion every time from personal experience a a car is running that fast and it just it something ends up going wrong and it usually ends up being the engine um expiring i've seen it time and time again and it sucks uh sucks for kofoid and uh, like i said he had that race one he was the fastest car uh, but it came down to Rico and David Gravel. And uh, David Gravel was able to fend off Rico and get that big check. Damn. Very, very awesome for him. Um, and he takes over the World of Outlaw point lead. Uh, Brad Sweet did not have the greatest week of racing. And so uh, David Gravel is... Um, Looking to get, like I've been saying, he's going to make a run in the summer. 
uh, look for him at the Eldora Million and Rico and just a bunch of these guys that's coming up. We're going to be going over that here in about a month. And that'll be, uh, you thought Houston was crazy. Going for 250000 away for going for a million. It's going to be really, really crazy stuff there. Uh, but um, big news is that they're uh, going to do this event again next year. Uh, same purse, so great on them for a facility that was uh, supposedly going to be sold a few years ago. Uh, just putting on great racing. Uh, crowd looked great there. Um, World of Outlaws just continue to put on great shows, and um, that's why people are coming to them. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's just real exciting. It's good stuff. Uh, dirt racing has been just amazing this year. And uh, I fully expect it to um, continue to just keep getting better. I, I I don't know if it's this tire or just the uh, the competition th- themselves, um, but it's just um, anybody's game right now. But David Gravel's in the catbird seat to uh, make a run at this championship, so look for him. He's got to have a strong summer, and he's got to stay out of trouble and go get lucky sometimes. All right, we're going to go into uh, NHRA recap. And none of my picks did anything at all. Um, it's been it's been a struggle, to say the least, on picks on asphalt. Um, yeah, so they're at Norwalk, Ohio. And... Uh, the biggest uh, thing was that in the Pro Stock Motorcycles, someone that didn't win was Gage Herrera. He, uh, I think he got smoked in round two. Yeah, but Gianni Evaristo and just did not expect that. Uh, the only reason Gage Herrera's lost this year is because he red-lighted. So that was shocking. Um, Pro Stock, the winner was Matt Hartford over Dallas Glenn. Dallas Glenn has been impressive getting a bunch of these finals. So look out for him making make it around this championship. Um, but good for uh, Matt Hartford on getting that win in Pro Stock. Uh, the funny car, uh, Blake Alexander gets the win over Matt Hagen. And Matt Hagen's still showing... Um, Strong runs, week in and week out, getting to the finals, picking up points, and making runs of the championship. And uh, top fuel is uh, Tony Stewart's bride, Leah Pruitt, gets the win over Justin Ashley. Justin Ashley, it seems like the guys, uh, the people that lost in these finals, they're consistently in the finals, so they're going to have big point leads. Uh, they say consistent of it, so that's a big thing. you got to be consistent. Um, with these uh, runs and not get eliminated first round, second round, and uh, just keep continuing to make gains. But Leo Brutes, fastest all weekend, gets the big win in top fuel in NHRA. They're off this week. They'll be back at in action next week. All right, we're going to finish off with NASCAR at Nashville Super Speedway. Uh, awesome track. Uh, I've been saying I love this track. I think this would actually be a pretty fun 4th of July race um, weekend. Um, Nothing says America like drinking Jack Daniels and Coke and shotgun and beers in Nashville. So America there. Uh, It's a great concrete track. Uh, It was very, very slick during the day, right? A part of the day race and Xfinity especially. And that was the biggest takeaway with that. Uh, but the Truck Series, Carson Hosevar, uh, gets his big win. Gets the second win of the year in the Truck Series. Uh, he's definitely improving. Uh, he was known as like the one that would take everybody out, kind of like the Ross Chastain version, I guess, whatever, of uh, the Truck Series, being very aggressive. Um, but he just uh, relied on being the right place, right time at the end, and truck just, they kept improving on it, improving on it, as the track kept cooling down, and gets the win, and avoiding wrecks. That's a big thing you got to do in the truck series. So uh, good for Carson Hosevar. Uh, it was 
a lot of cautions, but the uh, the restarts were pretty exciting. Actually, all three series of restarts were exciting. Now, moving to Xfinity, they might have been a little too exciting. So, the uh, Xfinity series, um, biggest uh, description, I guess, you could have of it is Crash Fest. Oh, just such a Crash Fest. Um... I don't even know where to begin. The track was very slick. Uh, the drivers aren't as good as like the Cup Series. You mix in experience with a slick racetrack, especially a concrete racetrack. Cars are slipping, sliding, and people try moves that shouldn't have happened. And they just crash, 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 crash. Um, but the winner of that race, AJ Allmendinger, getting a bunch of momentum coming up. He uh, crashed early, got involved in the wreck early, uh, comes back and gets a big win um, for uh, that 10 uh, team in uh, Colleague. So good for uh, Dinger. And he raced very well in the cup race. But uh, there were two, basically two people contending for the win. Uh, really three. Denny Hamlin was up there too. But Martin Truex Jr. Ross Chastain were there at the end. The biggest thing is with a transition race, you got to keep up with the racetrack. And you can see who kept making adjustments, making adjustments on it. And they are there at the right time. Uh, I thought Truex was going to get Chastain. Um, but he just used up all of his tires. And uh, there's really nothing he could have done. Um, Chastain gets a big win, his first, um, like, I guess high downforce win is what Steve Latart was talking about. And locks himself in the playoffs. He's um, got a chance to win the regular season championship, too. So that would be huge for Chastain if he gets that. But Martin Shurex Jr., Uncle Mo is a just a real thing and if you don't know what that is it's momentum Truex is in my opinion the championship favorite now as consistent as that team has been and how they continuously build on their speed week in and week out Truex is confident now he's got a couple wins he's going to start going for things and it's very similar to how he won the championship the first time a few years ago. A confident driver is a scary fast driver. Look for that team to be in contention every single week. Look for them to make a run at this championship. And it's a it, little bit by surprise, but good to see. Um, good to see uh, that team bounce back. It's always good to see a driver who's in the slumps and contemplating retirement after a down year comes back and has a phenomenal year so far so the summer months are hidden look for uh truex to again make a run of this regular season championship and then bank those bonus points if he wins it and be in contention for this championship in the playoffs well it's that time it's time for Crew Chief Corner. But before we welcome in my dad, Jeff Brown, Crew Chief Corner, as always, is brought to you by Lickety Lou's All Purpose Booyah Sauce. Go check them out at lickety-lose.com. Get them shipped to you anywhere you are. They're local here in North Carolina. Uh, there are only a few stores right now, but if you keep buying that stuff, they'll make it at any store you want. They got three awesome flavors original, spicy, Original, spicy, and yellow. And great stuff. Uh, put it on anything, especially for summer barbecues. Good stuff. So go check them out. All right. Here we go again. Another week of Crew Chief Corner. Let's welcome my dad, Jeff Brown, in once again. All right, Dad, we're back at it again, previewing a 
weird week in NASCAR, in my opinion, and Outlaws just finished up the humongous uh, pay week at uh, Houston. They're <laughs> dialing down a little bit, kind of going back to normal this weekend. Indy cars are uh, coming up as well. Uh, like I said, NASCAR is going to Chicago. Um, uh, I, I would let, I'm just going to get into NASCAR first, and, and I've been going on rants about it. About Chicago, it, uh, if you were going to go back to Chicago, they should have just done Chicago Land. It was a great racetrack, and it's a normal racetrack. And it's not in downtown Chicago in the street course. I see what NASCAR's trying to do. They're trying to replicate Formula One and all these rich people that go buy their $50 ham sandwiches at all the concessions and stuff, and they'll make millions of dollars, and it'll probably happen. I mean, and it might end up being a huge success because – they only look at the numbers, but I mean, a lot of true NASCAR fans, I don't think are really going to be there. I think you're going to see a bunch of uppity people and I just feel like the tickets are going to be hard to come by. I don't know how the racing is going to be. I don't know. What do you think? Well, you know, just looking at the layout of the street course, it actually makes me feel a lot better about the track because it's not going to be, you know, in my mind, I'm picturing a street course. They're, they're going through these real tight, little narrow turns. And just looking at the layout of the track, it, it it's nothing crazy. No, like, uh, S's anywhere. Uh, I think the tracks looks like it's pretty – just going by what they're showing some iRacing renders of it. Uh, visually, it's going to look pretty neat. Now, how it races, I don't know, but I think – they did it smart, whereas there's not going to be any super slow sections of the track. Yeah, these cars are just too big and too heavy to, to slow way down and try to accelerate back up. So I think it's actually going to be a relatively fast track. Uh, the one neat thing that I thought was kind of cool is turn one and turn six are in the same intersection. Turn yeah, one turns it. left and goes north. Turn six goes turns left and goes south when we come back. So they're coming in. Is that around, isn't that around the fountain or something in the middle? Uh, I like right know. before you get to the fountain they have or whatever. The, the no, it's just, thing. it's right out of the, the first, it's a hard left, you know, 90 degree left hand turn, you know, and then it comes back and has another 90 degree and it, you know, hopefully they have something major separating those two and, you know, keep any debris from coming from one side. Cause at some point the cars are going to be coming down that street head on you know into those corners which could be kind of neat so I, I when i saw the layout i, I felt a little better about it i, th I think it'll actually it, it might not race so bad i think it might actually race better than it did at uh, uh what's that big track in uh wisconsin oh uh road america road america because i think that track was just so narrow it was it was hard for them to pass i, I think these streets seem like, at least, I mean, I'm, I'm going by off of what iRacing looks like. Well, I think they can almost, and then the, I guess the good thing about a street course, too, they can shape it the way they wanted to for this race because it's nothing fixated like a road course. They can, whatever they wanted to make, and I'm, I, I assume they asked a bunch of the drivers, like, hey, how do you want this layout? How should it be? I would hope so. And so it's not so narrow and you have room to maneuver and everything. Cause that's, that would just be chaos, especially in the Xfinity race. <laughs> yeah. I think if you tried to run like the Indy cars on this track, it would, it, it's not a hard enough track for them. And I think it would just, I think that would be a disaster, but being, I think it's a, it's a simpler layout. I, I think it, I think it might be okay. I'm actually kind of looking forward to checking them out. You know, the race itself. Yeah, I'm going to obviously tune in because, well, I mean, also, there's not a whole lot to do on Sunday evenings anyways. Uh, but, I mean, I just, it just I don't know. It frustrates me mainly because this weekend is meant for Daytona. And yeah. uh, they just keep moving stuff around. I, I just, I like Daytona as the season fin regular season finale, but I, I like to keep traditions the same. That's just my... Yeah. Daytona in August is our rainy season down here, so that's not real smart. Uh, it's rainy season all the time. <laughs> um, so I I would assume there's going to be a couple double uh, head drivers and stuff racing Xfinity and Cup, mainly to get the experience and the layout. I would think track. so. Uh, how would these cars, how are the Xfinity going to handle? I know they're, they're completely different cars. How 
different would that be than the the cup race for a street course? I, I think the only the only thing you're going to gain from it is the, the visual cues, you know, breaking zones. You know, you're, you're going to you can probably learn how to pass. But I, I mean, just as far as handling and you know the 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 cup cars got so much such bigger wheels and tires and brakes that they're going to be able to run into the corner a whole lot faster than the Xfinity cars and still still be able to uh, stop and turn and, and things like that. You know, just learning how to get on the pit road is going to be a whole interesting thing. And I'm going to assume there's probably not going to be any stages in this race as well as I think all, mm-hmm. like all road courses don't have stages anymore. Yeah, this one might not be too bad. It's not as it's not that big of a course, not as big as like Sonoma or anything. Yeah, two two point one four miles. It says twelve turns. Yeah, I I think I I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. I have a lot of <laughs> I have a lot of opinions about it, but it, it, the biggest thing that could really play a factor. They showed it this weekend. It was raining there with um, Parker Kligerman's down there right now, which he's probably excited to be there for two weeks. And um, it, I mean, it's right next to one of the Great Lakes, so it's uh, definitely rain could be on the forecast, and that would throw away uh, a monkey wrench into this. I think that would be awesome to see it in the rain, especially if it's just a light rain, nothing crazy like Coda was a couple years ago. Well, I don't think NASCAR will let it get that heavy again yeah. because that little, was just little, little light rain where you have to run the rain tires. I think, I don't know. The rain I, tires I think are, that's just kind of neat. I like the rain tires. The rain tires uh, are really good. Uh, they have got great grip. The yeah. drivers like it. They want them. They want to run them just on uh, just yeah, drive. The, the rain actually probably equalizes the field a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be uh, interesting if that if weather plays a factor. And um, like I said, I think it's, it's going to be sold out. Um, it'll be interesting to yeah, see I how, uh, whole lot, you know, a ton and ton of people. No, I think it'll be like standing room, standing room only and stuff like that. Um, I think the pre-race, you're, you're going to see quite a bit of, uh, famous people there. You're going to see a bunch of people that have, I mean, I, you know, Michael Jordan's going to be there, Chicago bull, yeah. he owns a car. So that'll be interesting. Um, yeah, it'll, if, if, you know, if they're smart. Do the pageantry. Try to get all that stuff. Get you know, get hype on it. You know. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I I think they did it. They picked a good location though for it. I thought it was actually down downtown. Not, not so on the so did I. As I'm picturing, how is this going to ever work? That yeah, was just I think, in my mind. But I like I like how they have it at that park or whatever it is right right there. I think that's kind of kind of cool. You know, visually it looks pretty neat. Like I've been I've been to Chicago in the actual city part and not where everybody knows Chicago's famous for with all the violence and all that stuff. I've obviously not been there, but it is a nice city, especially the night uh, that nighttime is very nice. It's not going to be a night race, but it's a nice skyline um, it, from outside looking in. It's a nice city, but I mean, I don't live there and I don't want to. You, if you go there for a day, probably fine. Um, but uh, we're going to go ahead and get our picks out of the way for Xfinity and the, uh, the cup race. Uh, street course um, hasn't happened uh, in NASCAR, I don't think, ever. So uh, there were always talks about it back in the day, and I think even uh, Dale Sr. mentioned something about wanting to do a street course at some point, and uh, so I don't know where I saw that, but it was mentioned back either in the 80s or 90s. He said they should try something like that. So um, Xfinity race on Saturday, um, who are you going to go with? Um, cause you're probably going to pick better than me at this point. Well, I'm going to assume they're going to be cup drivers in the field. And there's only one that I can think of off the top Not of my head that probably it. has any kind of street course experience. Yeah, I know you're. So if he runs, uh, I'm going to pick, uh, AJ Allmendinger. Oh no, yeah. Two in a right. row. <laughs> if, he, if he doesn't race, my next pick would be Cole Custer. Um, I'm just going to go with an Xfinity veteran that can figure it out, knows how to get it done. Um, Justin Allgaier, he's just a good racer, natural racer. He'll figure it out, and he'll be in contention for it. He's a good road racer, too. He's just an all-around good racer, so uh, he'll be in contention for it. I'll pick Justin Allgaier. Uh, I have better luck with the Xfinity than our next picks coming up. <laughs> I am sorry, Ryan Blaney. I apologize uh, for ruining your um, – 
good it run. Just that so you hard to get the one spot that didn't have safer bearer. I, I'm like, of course. <laughs> I'm like, I saw him spinning. I'm like, oh and no. And then too. he just the, the hardest hit. I'm like, yep, that's about right. I think he got the wind knocked out of him. He was a little ginger. Oh, I would getting think so. It. Yeah, he, he said it was a hard hit. Yeah, um, he said uh, he would pay to put safer barriers at that spot. And it's, I get it, he's pissed off about it, but I mean, there's one spot like in the whole track and yeah, nobody I, expects them to spend I, I it it's gonna, it always gonna have it now i promise that but um who are you gonna go with in the cup series well it, it, it's tough the guy's been fast on road courses his owner's a chicago bull uh, i'm gonna go with tyler reddick i'm gonna go with your xfinity pick the guy that's been um running a lot better he's had a lot of momentum on his side goes a long way he's got a kid uh, about to be born here in a couple months that's uh, also a lot of momentum and a reason to run hard aj allmendinger for the chicago street course and I, shakes up the playoffs i'd love to see dinger win that race to be he'd be a little excited yeah uh, <laughs> for the record mom's pick she didn't really know she just said chase elliott I was either going to – if you pick Dinger, I was going to pick Chase. Those are the two picks that I had. Um, so Dinger's probably going to send it into the fountain now that I picked him, um, <laughs> knowing that. Uh, so. Dude, now, I, I would have guessed you were going to guess Joey Logano, being that he seems to win all these new tracks. Yeah, but uh, the the – Joey hasn't been strong. Uh, re the, really, the only Penske lately that's been running up front has been Brian Blaney. Yeah. So, um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be shocked if Joey were uh, would get the win because it's a brand new track. He does it everywhere. But <laughs> um, I, 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 just, I, they just haven't really been fast. Uh, I also wouldn't be surprised if Truex is up there. He's had momentum on the side like it's nothing. Yeah. Uh, he's now potentially the uh, one of the one of if not the championship favorite in my opinion as fast as, as they've been as consistent as they've been right i'll say right now the last few weeks he's been the the probably the most consistent car that's you know running in the top five anyways you ever feel tired kind of not making it through the day need a boost but you don't want to crash later on we'll go check out w energy they have figured out a supplement that doesn't make you crash makes you stay energized throughout the day and it's great tasting no carbonation either just a simple scoop goes in your water shake it up and you're on your way they also have hydration packets as well for the hot summer months coming up go to w.gg use promo code zbhp get 10 percent off your order can't beat that w.gg promo code zbhp 10 percent off your order go check them out now all right let's get back to it all right now we're gonna move from nascar and go into an indycar which is back this week at mid ohio uh what do you know about this road course there i i've watched uh trucks there and usually put on a pretty decent show yeah it's it's actually uh pretty nice track i i like the the permanent road courses uh they call it the uh mid ohio sports car course so they, they run all kinds of things on it it's uh two about two and a quarter mile 13 turns um it's got a little bit of everything it's got elevation changes it's got you know high speed corners it's got sh tight corners uh pit entry is uh tricky to get onto the way it's set up uh, the thing, it's it's really narrow, though. It's only 40 feet wide, which for IndyCar is not quite so bad. You get stock cars on it. That that gets tight. Let's see. They run uh, 80 laps. It's 100 and, almost 181 miles. And for anyone watching, it's Sunday at 1.30 on USA Network. I know that those races sort of seem to get lost in the, uh, the TV guide there a little bit. but Yeah, they uh, I, I don't know if the cup race is on nbc or if, i think it is nbc i uh, wasn't sure if it's on usa or not but i know they they'll go back to back kind of the basically the indycar race will end and then you'll go into the pre-race yeah for that um well the big uh news out of this year is that alex Pelot is putting on a clinic winning out of th a three out of four races trying to make it four out of five now um 
and just uh, looks like just a very good road course racer and just overall great Indy car racer as it is. Uh, you've picked it. You picked him the last Indy car race. And you got that right. And my guy, Joseph Newgarden was second. So um, at least yeah, that's about as good as we could do. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that was pretty sharp for us not really following IndyCar as closely as the uh, other uh, series. So uh, who you got for the IndyCar race at mid Ohio this week? Uh, the easy pick is Alex Pillow. Uh, I'm going to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to go with uh, Scott McLaughlin. He won there last year. I think he's going to make it uh, back back wins at that track. I'm going to do the easy pick. And yeah, I would. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Alex Pillow, and uh, he'll probably win three out of five races after I picked him. <laughs> uh, as long as he doesn't uh, just completely smash his car, I'll take it as a win this week. Uh, um, yeah, seriously. I did pretty good with the dirt race at uh, uh, Houston with World of Outlaws, which was yes, great you transit. Did. Which is a great transition to what we're uh, um, going into. Yeah, I mean, that was great. Once I hit the asphalt, pfft, done. And uh, so going right into World of Outlaws uh, this week at Cedar uh, Cedar Lake Speedway. And yep. that's in Wisconsin. New Richmond, Wisconsin. What's this uh, track? Three-mile like? clay oval. Uh, it's it's a really wide turn track, traditional oval. You know, it's kind of shaped like Lincoln Speedway. You know, fairly long straightaways and tight corners. Uh, it looks like just from watching some of the races, it's it's fast around the bottom early, and then the cars gradually work their way up as the night goes on. Uh, the track prep looks very nice. It, it looks like it's pretty smooth, not a whole lot of dust. You know, it gets a little slicker, which, you know, people kind of shit on slick tracks, but they put on better racing. You, you got to get, you know, you got to open that track up to have grooves. Well, there haven't really been any bad races with the World of Outlaws this year. They, yeah, they they've all been great. They uh, the races that you said were were amazing, and they announced they're going to go back there next year uh, for the same big time purse. So that's awesome. And uh, the Wisconsin tracks, well, watching the uh, the All Stars there a couple weeks ago, they were good tracks too. So I think it might be a, just like a Wisconsin clay thing. It's uh, it could decent, be. Uh, decent dirt up there. Um, I was dominating pretty much the, uh, the picks at uh, the last world of outlaws, uh, thing. Uh, I thought Rico was going to be able to get it done. Um, but David gravel got the big win. And like I said, I, I said it from the beginning of the year, David gravel still my pick for the world of outlaw champion. I'm pretty sure he's in the lead now in points. I I'll double. So. Oh, um, yeah. Fact check me on that, but I'm pretty sure he's been too, <laughs> too consistent. And, uh, Brad sweet didn't have a great week at Houston. So, uh, Going to uh, Cedar Lake uh, for Friday. It's Friday and Saturday. Who are you going with Friday night? Friday night, this guy makes a comeback from getting hurt real bad at Knoxville, uh, Carson Macedo. I'm going to keep the guy that's got the momentum going. He's been rolling. He's been getting second, 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 first, finally. Uh, David Gravel for Friday night. Actually, uh, you know, now we got just – Logan Schuhart starting to get rolling again now. Yep. So that adds one more car to the mix. makes it a lot tougher to pick. As I said, the outlaw racing has been very good racing. It, you just never know anymore. Well, going into um, Saturday night, um, you going to back-to-back pick or a different no, one? No, I'm going I'm to mix it up. I, I keep picking this guy, and he's, he, he hasn't done anything for me. Sooner or later, he's bound to break through. Right. Uh, I'm going to go Brad Sweet. Yep. I was thinking the uh, way you were talking about that, I was about to say it was Brad Sweet. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go with uh, one that's been kind of rolling too. He had he had some good showings at um, Houston last week. Uh, James McFadden for Saturday night in the Toyota. Yeah, um, Kofoid had it won uh, for the 250 and uh, just uh, it blew up. I think. <laughs> I mean, we we know from firsthand when those cars run like a hellion like that, it's yeah. uh, it's kind of an indicator. It's weird. It's an indicator they're going to blow up. Uh, see it time and time again. So um, yeah, that, that seems to be, the, the Toyota seems like they make power, but the reliability isn't quite there yet. And they'll they'll get it. They'll that's kind of well. That's how NASCAR started too when they moved into the uh, the TRD up into uh, the Cup Series. They had some engine issues to start off, and then they started flying. Um, it's just it's a yeah, like you said, it's a matter of time. Uh, I think that wraps it up. PA Speed Week still underway. Um, you've you've gotten the uh, only pick right. So far, um, I have not. Uh, you, you got Macri um, for uh, Susky on yesterday. 
and it just announced that Lincoln's going to race on Thursday instead of tonight uh, due to weather. Um, and Macri won at Lincoln before, and he's my pick for Lincoln the second night. So, like I said, <laughs> Macri's likely going to be the Speed yeah. Week champion. He's already got a huge lead already, um, as it as it is now. Uh, he's probably he's, the fastest car in PA consistently right now. That uh, the Lincoln race was a hell of a race. If anybody hasn't seen that, I talked about it earlier in the show. So Susky. Yeah, I didn't get to see the highlights of Susky uh, yeah. because uh, it was on a channel I didn't couldn't find. It doesn't make it easy, which it was flow. But yeah, that Lincoln one with a three car, four car battle at the end. Uh, the PA announcer had no idea where to where to talk. Uh, he's like, ah, just watch, just just watch it. He's like, I don't even know how to say what's going on. So um, I th- I think all week you're going to see a bunch of good racing like that. So I've been good dirt racing all year. Um, even asphalt overall has been pretty decent. Um, NASCAR kind of fell off a little bit last couple races. Nashville wasn't a bad race, so. Uh, hopefully Chicago proves me wrong and ends up being a good race, even though I still will hate it at the end of the day, but hopefully at least it's a good race. Um, it'll make it even better if Larson wins and makes me feel better. Um, but yeah, that's just, uh, that's how you, how that goes. But, um, uh, all right. Well, if anybody's got any comments, uh, to make any questions, go ahead and fire it in the down below and we'll try to get to it next week's episode. Yeah, feel uh, free go, to post post your picks in the in the comments. You know, interesting to see who you guys think's going to win. Yeah, talk uh, talk all the trash if you end up being better than mine. Doesn't take much, and <laughs> uh, and I go through like a methodical and analytic approach for my picks, and just it's just how my fantasy football works. Same thing. Yep. <laughs> it's exactly how it is. Um, but go ahead, like, subscribe on the uh, YouTube channel, follow anywhere you get a podcast and all social media platforms. Dad, till next week, uh, we'll probably uh, do it in person and because uh, I'll be flying down there uh, to Flo Rida, uh for uh, July 4th week. So uh, we'll get a little Independence Day uh, release coming out. Yep, that'll so, be fun. All right, till then, guys, uh, we'll see you. Night, everybody.